21st century superhuman quantum lifestyle with contributor Teddy Mulder, PhD, who is in attendance today. Is Teddy here? She's back. And Teddy's in the back <laughs> at Carrie's table. This is the must have guide to how quantum physics, ancient wisdom, and cosmic conjunctions are now transforming our reality in the long prophesied shift of the ages, potentially the greatest evolutionary leap in human history. I've read it myself, it's a fabulous book. Carries an innate ability to ground and assimilate the language of light and love into practical everyday terms. It's like having the gentle hand of a friend on your shoulder, guiding you to greater awareness. She has introduced transformational programs mainstream for decades, swimming with wild dolphins, teaching age reversal and rejuvenation with living foods, firewalking with Tony Robbins, and experiencing miraculous healing of her own broken arm. Now, let's get Carrie up here to explain the rest of everything she has. Everyone, Carrie, Pure Star, Ellis. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm going to start out with our 21st Century Superhuman song while we're getting everybody else in here. Okay, that gives you guys a little taste of my theme song. I couldn't tell from up here, but I hope you can hear it okay. Yeah, yeah. A really great young guy named Noah Bro wrote that song, and he's a beloved friend of ours. Um, and he called me one day and he said, Carrie, I need a reset. And I'm going to see if I can do this with this mic. I'm kind of, I move and talk a lot, so let's see if I can do it this way. Just make it a little more. How's that? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, be easier for me because I'm running this thing. So, um, thank you, wonderful brother Bill Ballard. Um, you know, we're getting to be a soul family here, and I'm so happy each one of you is here in person because every time we gather in person, there's something very magical and special that happens. We all get accelerated, we get to know new friends, um, we get to know, you know, we get contact with uh, this soul vibration that's happening on the planet. And we are a race of beings that literally, when have we entered the shift of the ages? Baby, we're in the shift of the ages. I mean, this is, and none of us are accidental tourists here. Every single one of us who are here are here for a reason. And um, so I just welcome you all. I say thank you for being here with us in person. I'm gonna go one hour. This is going to be a really fast download. So is everybody ready for a download? Everybody that's ready for a download, say yay. All right. So 
So let's hop on. I'm going to go fast. I crammed a lot in here because I didn't want you guys to miss anything. Um, this is Teddy Mulder that's standing up with the camera. She's a contributor to the book. Um, I really wrote the book, but we've been friends since 1980. She's one of the people that worked on my um, broken arm that we healed in six hours with body electronics. We had like a soul pod of people who came in and showed up together. Teddy and I have been in dialogue for, you know, 35 years. And so I say we don't do anything alone in this world. The old system of I, me, it's all for me is going away. It is going to disintegrate. And we can see it now in all the alternative news. It is disintegrating. And we are getting ready. We're already entered in the phases of building a new civilization founded in love. And this comes from a lot of ancient prophecies. So this is the book, 21st Century Superhuman. I actually had a relationship end out in Colorado, and the universe just said, okay, it's time to write that book. And I came back to Michigan. Teddy and some other housemates have a home in Michigan and one in Florida. And so I get to park my van, and I sat for eight months with a scarf wrapped around my head. I couldn't even talk. And um, I was just getting these downloads. Teddy would come and knock on my van window in the morning, and he'd say, well, how are you today? And I'd say, I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Because what I was doing was beginning to integrate all this information. It was like thousands of things had all crossed at once. And I just knew, I said, I've got to put this into a form that I can get it out to people. And 21st Century Superhuman was a title that just came to me from the universe. You know, It wasn't like I sat there and went, oh, let's see what shall this book be. I was getting a download so fast I could barely function. I'd wake up at 6 in the morning, meditate, start writing. I'd write until 2 in the morning. Teddy and our other friends would bring me food. Um, I had people send me money. I mean, it was just amazing, you know, and it was an amazing process, an amazing journey. It's transformed me and my life. It's dedicated me to living on the planet in a whole new way. I hope every single one of you will take one of these books home with you. There's a four-volume set that's exactly the same content as the Green Book. This is being called one of the most important books on the planet and guidebook for these times. So you're going to get to see as we go through the slideshow really what's in here. So it's funny, I was already working with these questions, and later on I heard Michael Tellinger say them, you know, in his book, Slave Speeches to the Gods. But important questions for our now. Who are we? Where are we here? Why are we here? And where are we going? So the shift of the ages is not a cataclysm. It is a, I can't read from here, it's a galactic progression towards an unprecedented evolutionary leap. And we're about to find what cosmic shifts and influences are already underway. You know, the old version of, oh my gosh, the shift of the ages is going to be, you know, the endings. But really this is an amazing beginning, and we're going to see why. The Earth's magnetics right now are the lowest in 4,000 years. This is something Greg Braden put out in his books, and he's formerly a geologist. They can track this in the rocks. 4,000 years. This is when people's minds are open to new things. Yeshua or Jesus and Buddha, Zoroaster, all came in the time of lowered magnetics. And it's because our minds are more open. We're ready to receive new information. We're ready to, to upgrade our program. You know, it's like, the, it's like the program that runs the computer. We're upgrading our program right now. So we've been left ancient records from these civilizations. Um, I travel and teach these workshops all over, and there's a lot of areas that I go into. There's about four or five workshops I teach on this information, but I'm trying to give you guys an overview of everything. So we go into some more of the ancient stuff in some of the workshops. But what messages did these civilizations leave us? I ancient Egypt was grounded as a complete civilization. It didn't, you know, slowly emerge. It was a post-Atlantis seeded awakened civilization. They were, they, in, 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 in ancient Egypt, they would say their life, when they went to the other side, would be weighed against a feather. Their life would be put on a scale and weighed against a feather. And how did they live? Did they live in love? Did they live in truth? Did they live in light? Truth, harmony, and justice were what this pursuit of soul consciousness was about. 3500 BC, Mesopotamia, the Indus Valley, the Vedic teachings, and my little pointer here, who are these little guys from some of the clay tablets? So these are the clay Sumerian tablets of Zechariah Stitchin. How many people have read Zechariah Stitchin's 12th Planet? Michael Tellinger's Slave Species of the Gods, kind of a modern rendition of that material, with the Anunnaki about us. I believe we've been probably seeded by many races, but 
in the Indus Valley, the Vedic teachings, ancient Egypt, I believe that those were seeded civilizations where these beings from other planets, other dimensions, our ancestors, our great grandparents were bringing us information to nudge us along on the wake up path. So this is kind of a cool, um, Just this comes from Graham Hancock, who's a British journalist. How many know Graham Hancock? Um, he went into ayahuasca and woke up, and um, he's been really bringing forth a lot of really incredible prehistory, and I just love his little, some people may disagree with the exact dates on this, but in general, let's say 200,000 years ago, we were seeded. Um, and the book Slave Species of the Gods by Michael Tellinger or Zechariah Sitchin stuff goes into this in detail. 80,000 years ago, maybe Lemuria started. Lovely little civilization of a very um, earth-oriented, sweet, heart-centered group of people. Um, and you think of Hawaii being remains, so the Pacific is like the remains of the ancient Lemuria. And uh, my name, Carrie Kuristar, Kuristar comes from a Lemurian memory that I have. Um, I have an award-winning screenplay that I hope will be on the screen some point soon, and it is called Dream Spell the Awakening. But it was basically a lot of, I got a download, another download on that, and um, I was, Lemuria was going down, the volcanoes were erupting, and I was a little girl that had, wore a special pendant, and I was with a little boy, and we were, carried the seeding of the more advanced culture. And the volcanoes were erupting, and the people were running, and I could hear my mother calling, Kira! And so that's where Kira Star came from. Um, so pay attention. Pay attention to your <coughs> lucid dreams, to the messages that come to you, because we're all getting these messages now. I'm not that unique. I mean, we all are here to wake up, to remember our roots, to remember the lifetimes, past, future, that we have participated in to get us to this point. Um, 1900 BC, an ice age, a glac glacial maximum. 10,500 BC, Atlantis. And we know Atlantis was a really similar civilization, very advanced to what we are now, maybe more advanced in some ways. Um, 9,000 BC was the great cataclysm where Atlantis went down. And then 6,000 BC, Egypt was born from the ashes of a world that was rebuilding itself, but it was born as an already advanced civilization. So we have entered a transition the Mayans called the shift of the ages, an ending and a new beginning. So this is really cool. This is kind of, I'm going to show you a few pictures of what our galaxy in our, here's Earth down here. Here's Alcyone, which is the central sun of the Pleiades. Sirius by many, um, and I never talk about anything that isn't in our book. So if you want to like learn more about all this stuff, get our book and read it. It's also available on Amazon and Kindle, but we brought a lot of them with us. So um, there is an organization of scientists who believe that most stars are binary and that potentially the binary star of our sun is Sirius. We literally move around the Pleiades with our galaxy. Our galaxy orbits around Alcyone, which is the central sun of the Pleiades, and then Sirius is out there. And we, and Sirius is considered a gateway. The Dogon are connected to Sirius. Um, the Dogon tribe in Africa, who downloaded a lot of information, and said that cannabis was brought from Sirius. Uh, a lot of really cool um, cosmological history and. So it's believed that Sirius is the binary star to our sun. Um, and then we have the great central sun, which this whole thing orbits around. And as we, we have moved into a position where we're getting really major transmissions from the central sun. So wake up codes are being sent to us. Why do you go outdoors? Why do you get in the sun? Why do you go out without glasses and sunglasses on? Because we're receiving transmissions every day. Um, and as our friend Bill Ballard reports on a lot, you know, we're getting solar flares. We've got all this activity going on that is really a positive thing. We're being fed information, we're being fed codes, we're being fed wake-up codes. So we are now being activated by faster moving photons of light. This is an event stranger than fiction, awakening latent abilities dormant within us. So what does that mean when we're being activated by faster moving photons of light? It, it activates our pineal gland to produce more DMT. So then we're gonna have this, 
feeling, we're going to go, oh, wow, I love you. You're me. You know, we DMT being activated gives us a knowing of our oneness with all things and all people and all beings. Even the bad ones are oneness. We are one. We are from the oneness. So using the data from Voyager, this is funny because this is um, from uh, NASA Science News. Using data from Voyager, we've discovered a strong magnetic field just outside of the solar system, explains Marav Ofer of NASA. The magnetic field holds the interstellar cloud together and solves a long-lasting puzzle of how it can exist at all. These could be interesting times, says the guy from NASA. You betcha. So this is what the photon belt looks like. I remember reading about in the 1980s in Scientific American, I was reading the scientists knew we were moving into darker fields of light. They didn't know what they were, but we were literally entering the edge of the photon belt. Now our whole galaxy is completely in the photon belt. And so, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to go forward. Um, so this is the photon belt here. Here is our little solar system, and we're in an orbit around this and we go through it. So we're at, we've entered what's called the thousand years of light. Here's some other pictures. Um, the photon belt really looks like a torus field, that, that donut-shaped, kind of eternal, energetic. Um, and this is what, there's a book called Hamlet's Mill. Um, David Wilcock talks about it a lot. You know, if you get a chance to watch Guy on TV, um, what David I'm seeing heads nodding. How many people are paying attention to David Wilcock and a lot of his great work? Um, he tells about how really for 26, every 26,000 years, and there's a book called Hamlet's Mill where they traced all of the, the myths and legends that civilizations had carried forward because these stories were the only way they had to tell this really advanced scientific knowledge they had. And so the knowledge has been around for thousands of years, how we move through this con cosmos. But how do you pass that on when the Earth is going through cataclysms, when civilizations are being born and dying? Um, you know, it's a big deal. And so the Hamlet's Mill, a lot of that has been passed on in story. So again, here's our sun and solar system. Here's Alcyone in the center of the Pleiades, and that's just kind of how we orbit. Alcyone is the brightest star of the Pleiadian system. Our sun takes 24,000 years to complete one full revolution around Alcyone. How many have... Um, the little app on your phone that you can go out and read the, I'm trying to remember what the one I use is called, does anybody? Planet. What, do you, what is it? Star charts. Star charts. There's a few of them and they're free. You can download them to your phone and I've just spent hours at night out looking at the stars with my smartphone to see where all the constellations are. It's a lot easier way than trying to like look at a chart in a book and then go out and look. So I encourage you, get to know where these places are because you can see them out there. It's really cool. You know, the Belt of Orion, Alcyone, um, the Pleiades. These are where our star seed heritage has come from. We are orbiting a place in space we get to only once every 26,000 years. This is a quote from our book. Where powerful cosmic influences awaken mind and heart through stimulation of the pineal gland, activating a heightened sense of oneness with all things. Simultaneously, modern translation of ancient texts dovetails with quantum physics, advancing us into profound new awareness of how our world operates. There is a potential for remarkable change to occur, uncommonly accessible during this evolutionary leap called the shift of the ages. I love this diagram, it's really cool, because people always say to me, are we gonna make it? Carrie, are we gonna make it? And I say, yeah, of course we're gonna make it. And here's why, because 10,000 BC, what was here? All you smart people, 10,000 BC, Atlantis. Atlantis, thank you. Um, and so then we went through six 2,000 year cycles of darkness. We went through a dark part of the universe. Six 2,000 year cycles, the dark ages, you know, all those things that we wish hadn't happened that may, many of us have probably had past lives in. And then we go from there, we get to 2000 AD. What happened in 2000 AD? Well, we're here, right? 2000 AD and the Christ return, you know, at zero and then 2000 AD the Christ return, which is really we're here for the return of the Christ in consciousness. We're, we are here to be bearers of the Christ of consciousness. And by the time you get done listening to me today, you're going to know exactly what that is. It's not a mystery. 
And Einstein says, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it very well yourself. So you guys are going to know by the time you leave here today what Christed consciousness is and how we carry it forward, how we change our DNA, how we change our civilization. So we are, yes, we're going to make it. We're going into six 2,000-year cycles into the light. And we are just beginning. I mean, yes, we're going to make it. Isn't this cool? Yes. The dawning of the age of Aquarius. There you go, right on. And that's what that means. That's what that's all about. Give you an idea. So this is the black hole in Sagittarius A. It's the, clear, the closest black hole to our galaxy our solar system and there's this huge cloud of cosmic dust at the opening of this and it's kind of getting sucked in scientists all over the world are waiting to see what kind of like explosion there's going to be this is at Sagittarius A I've seen a really cool picture um, David Icke does where he literally puts the eye of Horus over this picture and the eye of Horus really depicts our pineal gland so um, some very cool woo woo things going on here um, that we want to know we're sitting on the brink um, and I didn't really put it in the slideshow there's a guy named Dieter Brewers who wrote a book called Solar Revolution his whole family died in a car accident or something and he said look I'm gonna there's a big chapter on him in our book he's amazing he's a German biophysicist there's a um, YouTube video called Super Plasmic Galactic Ray, and it is like a small segment from his documentary, which is Solar Revolution. And he says, this blast of light that we're going to be getting, and this light that we're being fed right now, has the capacity to take us through a leap as dramatic as when man discovered language. We have the potential right now, Cobra talks about the event, how many people pay attention to Cobra? Taksugi of Swiss Indo, how many people have heard of Swiss Indo? talk about the event. This is, um, you know, David Wilcock is starting to talk about it. So what is the event? The event potentially is us getting such big waves of light that suddenly even the people that are carrying around guns just drop their guns and go, wow, I can't do this anymore. I love you. You're one of me. You know, it's that simple. It's that cosmic. It's that perfect. It's that beautiful. So DMT is made by our pineal and pituitary glands. Um, we're gonna get into that in a little bit. So here we are, I guess here's the slide. Good, right in the right spot. I love it when that happens. Um, so you can see the, the pineal gland calcified with fluoride down at the bottom there. And um, flu, you know, the old myth, the whole, the whole fluoride story is in our book if you wanna know how that came about. Um, it's just a story that was made up. Um, Hitler had piles of fluoride at the concentration camps. I mean. Fluoride is put in the water, in all of our water systems, to make us passive, so that we fit into this old slave species system, which we're now waking up from and saying, hey, we're not doing that anymore, right on. Um, South America, I've traveled in South America a lot, guess where the fluoride is? Because the water systems are all scattered. It's in the salt, you know? So I take my own salt when I go down there, because I don't want it. Florida. And you know, you have to work a little bit to get it, you know, out of your shower, out of your sink. I love Dunedin where Teddy's house is. Um, they've gotten the town has gotten the water the fluoride out of the water system. Because there's a whole bunch of um, who are those people that are right down the road from you guys? The, um, Scientologists. Scientologists. So if you guys live in a town, maybe a small town where you can gather the people together and start getting the fluoride out of your water, that would be, you know, what can I do? What can I do at home where I live? This is really important. So, reclaim your own mystical, magical spirit. And I teach a workshop called Awaken the Shaman Within. If any of you are part of a group, you know, an organization, a unity church, if I'm traveling in your area, I'd be happy to come and do these workshops. I just do them by donation. I bring the books. Source, spirit, the field has blessed us with always giving us what we need. And as Bill has become fond of saying lately, and I've become fond of saying lately because of conversations with him and others, we're going from manifestation to, what's the word, Bill? Materialization. Materialization. And we're going to talk about how that happens in just a minute here. So we also do a 21st century superhuman Jedi training. This is Ken, who's kind of an awakened starseed that works with us. Really great guy. We met him a few years ago, and he was like, 
making the wind come in through the trees and moving the water and all this stuff. And it was like, you know, we all can do it. And we've all been learning how to do it. It's amazing. It's super cool. And um, so we're going to start having classes online because we can't get everywhere. So I've been madly working on our website, which is 21stCenturySuperhuman.com, and we'll start having some of classes with him right online so they'll be easy to access. We do travel and teach them, but we can't be everywhere. Um, so activating our DMT, and we're going to talk more about how our DMT gets activated, but some of the ways to activate it and clear the pineal are singing, dancing, drumming, praying, meditating, all these age-old, ancient chanting, cultivating community, growing gardens, following your heart, finding your path, living a cleansing lifestyle, herbs, oils, creativity, sunlight, being barefoot, and love. These are all ways to activate our pineal gland, activate our DMT, and advance our DNA. Simple, age-old, customs and ways of being on planet earth incorporate them play a flute go to a drumming circle get to know your community you know these are all things we can do right where we are none of, none of us have to go travel around the world like i do but you can if you want to you know if you're called if you're so called please do but no we are the change makers right where we are so we have now entered what the ancients called the shift of the ages Chaos often precedes enlightenment. Current systems are unsustainable. Our world is in crisis. Accelerated light is activating our spirit molecule, opening us to a greater sense of oneness. Quantum physics says, and we're finally able to understand, that thoughts are creating our reality. The ancient Aramaic is amazing. It teaches us to clear ourselves to love, get rid of all our old data. Um, we're activating a potential for the greatest evolutionary leap in human history called the shift of the ages. So a tw the, the shift of the ages is a 21st century superhuman initiation. So again, cosmic influences, increased photons of light, quantum physics is changing our view of our reality. As we change our mind, we change our resonance. As we change our resonance, we change our reality. When we live with nutrition and cleansing, it raises our frequency, and our path to the future is living from the heart. Even a child knows how to do it. How simple is that? How about everybody doing what my favorite thing to do is, that Teddy and I just had business cards printed. There's no phone number on there. There's no email address on there. There's a place to go to our website, and you know what it says? It says breathe and smile. Because that's how we activate neuroplexes is in the frontal lobe of our brain and the back of our brain to live with intentions and perceptions of love. This is what the ancient Aramaic came to teach. This is what true forgiveness was. Breathing, smiling, offloading any old data in us that's creating something we don't like seeing around us and activating love in the field. It's that simple. So everything we've just gone through is in the first section of the book. Um, my sister-in-law said to me after I wrote a 500-page book, which is the green book, she said, Carrie, I just want something I can carry in my purse. So when I did the first edit, I basically divided it. It was already divided into four parts, but I made it so it could be printed in four parts. So there's either four small books or one big book. That's how it comes. And so we've just gone through the first section of the book, basically. There's a lot more in there, obviously, but that's the gist of it. Um, it's called The Shift of the Ages. So the possibility of stepping, this is Deepak Chopra, the possibility of stepping into a higher plane is quite real for everyone. It requires no force or effort or sacrifice. It involves little more than changing our ideas about what is normal. How many of you have like gone, oh my God, do I dare stand for that in this world? Oh my gosh, do I dare step out and live this life? How many have had that sort of like, wow, do I dare do this? Can I speak my truth? You know, and then finally you start doing it and it becomes normal and it's, and it's wonderful. And I mean, I've had those many phases of that in my life because I've definitely gone out to the edge one of the many times. So what is most important in your life? Do you have it? You know what that is? What's most important to you? Why or why not? 
what is the most important thing? Do you have it? True love is our design, and we access it by something as simple as breathing and smiling. In Hawaii, there's the aloha greeting. They bend and they touch foreheads, and literally, hopo and ono, the aloha breath, all came from the ancient Aramaic. The ancient Aramaic was grounded as a complete language around that time ancient Egypt was grounded. It is a language, it is a holographic language of light. It is not the kind of language that we are using today, which was designed to make distance between people. So the ancient Aramaic is literally vibrational. And it tells us forgiveness is removing from ourselves the data that is creating in the hologram we see around us. Our friend Michael Rice, who taught who wrote the foreword to this book, um, who is the head of, the, of a, he's the moderator of a group translating one of the oldest known Aramaic documents, the Kaburas manuscript. He was a naturopath and all these other things. And he finally said, you know, there's nothing else to do with my life except teach people this. If we had gotten 2,000 years ago that forgiveness was not what the Greeks translated it in, who were a power over culture, and they didn't have the capability of understanding, that our thoughts are creating what we see around us. They said, well, if you say you're sorry, I won't chop your head off. So I'll, I'll forgive you if you just say you're sorry, right? That's what forgiveness has been perpetuated as. But, per, but forgiveness in the ancient Aramaic was breathe, smile, offload any data. We're going to see this in a minute outside of love that's operating within your vehicle because you are a creator being. You are a creator being designed to operate in love. That's it. Simple. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. <laughs> so this is a really beautiful, um, this is a friend and I when we arrived in <coughs> Lima, and this is all the orbs, she took this picture. But joyful hearts amplify fields of light. And you know, we're used to seeing orbs and used to seeing things mirrored in the field. We are now awakening from a deep sleep. We are beginning to remember who we are. So how many grew up in school being told that an atom was a mini solar system? Looked like a mini solar system. Nobody? Hardly anybody? Yeah, really? Can't remember. I've heard it from people at all. So, and, and truly an atom is only comes into being as a mini solar system once we have put our attention upon it. I'm going to go through this really fast. It's kind of a complicated concept, um, but you can go on to YouTube and watch um, videos on the double slit experiment. Basically, this was done first in the 1800s. A guy was trying to figure out the properties of light. So um, basically, you've got light being shown through these two slits in this board and they're landing in a splatter pattern back here. Why is this? And the guy doing this experiment said to his buddy, hey, go stand up there and see what's wrong with this stuff. Why is it landing in a splatter pattern? It should be landing in straight lines. Well, as soon as the guy stood here, it all started landing in straight lines. And basically, why that is, is it's called the observer effect in quantum physics. So matter and energy take shape based on our observation upon it. John Hagelin, who's now the head of the TM organization, says the field is like effervescent ginger ale. It's just <laughs> waiting for our attention upon it, for matter and events to come into being. So the ancient Aramaic reveals how to free ourselves from old data and restore our true design love. Hidden in this ancient wisdom are the keys to our future. Will you be one of the ones who find them? So this is kind of what the ancient Aramaic language looks like. This is actually Brian de Flores' language of light, but it's very similar. Appeared as a complete language, precedes at least six other languages, including Arabic, Sanskrit, Hebrew, Persian, Lakota, and Polynesian. Um, it's very close to the sounds of creation, the language of light. That's Dr. Michael Rice and his lovely wife, Jeannie, who travel the world teaching these principles. Out of the heart come the issues of life. And what heart meant in the ancient Aramaic was unconscious. Nobody understood what that meant. 
Um, but out of the unconscious comes, our unconscious old data vibrationally comes this creation that we're going, well, why is so-and-so killing so-and-so over there? Because of the hatred that I still carry in myself unconsciously for my generations? Hmm. So we have to take out the garbage. Harvard studies tell us it's like we're standing in a garbage can. 5% of our thought is conscious, 95% is unconscious. 10,000 generations, we're carrying the cataloged information, time to clean out our hard drive, right? Clean out all that old junk data. And how do we do that? By breathing, smiling, focusing in love, and letting go, canceling, releasing, and letting go is what it says in the New Testament. Anything not of love. I feel fear, I feel grief about the animals, I feel anger about you know, the children in the hospitals in Syria, let it go. Because the only way we're gonna change the world is by centering in love, by breathing, smiling, centering in love, and letting go anything outside of love. If you practice that every day, and it's the one thing you take home from this, you'll be changing the world, you'll be changing your life, you'll be transforming it. It's the biggest key there is. Once upon a time and long, long ago, we decided everything was someone else's fault. We gave up remembering that we are creators. We began something called the blame game. And we began to entertain blame, fear, hostility, judgment, and control. It's really great when you get rid of anger and fear, but judgment and control are pretty subtle. I want to control my kids. I want to control my partner. I want to judge how somebody else is doing something. I do online TV shows for Naturally Better TV, and I pr I'm producing shows all the time. And I can't tell you, a lot of people write and say, hey, this is wonderful, my life is changing. And then I have people who write me and say, well, you know, so-and-so's thing doesn't work, or so-and-so's got a problem over here. I'm like, really? Like, you are wasting your time playing in judgment? Why? Because it's old data. It's time to breathe, smile, cancel it, and let it go. Can you think of when you felt these things? Anybody got it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Yoda says, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Simple in the, for children to understand. So we need to clean off our movie projector lens of 10,000 generations of data outside of love and begin seeing through a clean movie projector screen, which is love. So the matrix only mirrors to us that which we give it. We live in a holographic world. That's a quote from Greg Braden. There's hundreds of quotes in our book. It's like we, I can't even tell you this download that came to me. It was just like, okay, I gotta put, bring this person into it. Suddenly life becomes the messenger of our resonance rather than life happening to us. So what I've learned, this is why I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Because every time something happens, I have to say, oh, look what my resonance drew in today. You know, if you fall in love, great. But if you've got somebody with road rage over there, can you say to yourself, wow, my resonance drew that in. What do I need to clear? This is how we live when we understand these principles. The young people get it. The older ones were a little more crusty in our, um, our, um, you know, our program. But a lot of the young ones come to my workshops, and they'll even be crying at the end of the workshop because they're like, God, I just want to live a really meaningful life. I didn't come here and be part of this whole crazy world. And so it's changing. Be of good faith. In a quantum world, there is no out there, out there. There's a great guy named Steve Davies who wrote a book. There's a website called Butterflies Fly Free, and he wrote a book called Butterflies Are Free to Fly. You can download it for free as an audio book really great. It's about understanding the principles of quantum physics, but there is no out there, out there. It's all coming from us. We're the projectors. The path of the 21st century superhuman, we are becoming conscious creators of our reality. What we see in the world around us that we don't like or that we do like is a mirroring of what's within us. Lynn McTaggart, who wrote a great book called The Field, which is like 60 years of um, experiments in consciousness that have to do with quantum physics. An electron is not a precise entity, but exists as a potential, a superposition, this is atoms, or a sum of all probabilities until we observe or measure it. 
at which point the electron freezes into a particular state. Once we are through looking or measuring, the electron dissolves back into the ether of all possibilities. This is how fast your reality can change. If you're feeling rage, you're feeling hurt, you're feeling pain, you're feeling suffering, this is how fast we can change the world. You guys, we are important. Everyone who gets this, we're going to change, the, we're changing the collective. We're changing the war in the other part of the world. We're changing the shame, the hatred, the terror, the dissonance between religions and people. So remember, it's as simple as breathe, smile. Activate Rachma and Kuba, which are nerve plexuses in the front and the back of your brain, designed to operate you in, in perceptions and intentions of love. So in Hawaii, they do the aloha greeting. They bow, touch each other's foreheads. They inhale the same breath, and they look at each other and smile. And it is as if to say, I greet you with open breath. I'm not holding anything back. And then the white man came along, and they call him the Howley. He wanted to shake your hand to see if you had a gun in it. The, man, the Howley is the man who greets without the breath. This all came from the ancient Aramaic, the roots of Hopalanono, of the Polynesian language, of the Lakota teachings. They're all rooted in this ancient Aramaic, which is really critical stuff for our times. And we're, for the first time, we're really able to understand it, because it is a quantum physics concept. Our awakening process is living love, moving beyond blame, fear, judgment, hostility, and control. A Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. Dr. Richard Bartlett, who developed Matrix Energetics, I've been to workshops with him, he's really fun. You are more than your thoughts, your body, or your feelings. You are a swirling vortex of limitless potential who is here to shake things up and create something new that the universe has never seen. And this is, a lot of times it's accredited to Einstein, but it's actually Bashar. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. So we're going from spirituality into quantum physics. And quantum physics has always been carried in our spirituality, but misunderstood through thousands of generations of blame, fear, judgment, hostility, and control, ignorance, choosing to step out of the fact that we were creator beings designed to operate in love. So here we are. We've got all these pieces on the plate. It's so exciting. We are quantum beings in a 3D world. The zero point field of possibilities is our playground. That's from the divine matrix. Has anybody seen the 13th floor? It's a great old movie. That's really good. Not the other horror movie, but the same thing. Yeah, okay. So Albert Einstein says, concerning matter, we have been all wrong. What we have called matter is energy whose vibration has been so lowered as to be perceptible to the senses. There is no matter as such. We are living in a world of constantly emerging creation. No matter if you think there's a tan wall over there with bricks coming out of it, and I think it, it is too, and I agree. Um, at the same time, this life is emerging every second. And the more you live this, the more you will realize how much of a change agent you can be in it. So Nassim Harman says, the great, greater mind is called acacia by some, by many. Thinking the mind is in the brain is like thinking the radio announcer is in the radio. <laughs> so we have access to greater mind all the time. It's flowing to us. The brain is just a filtering mechanism. Oh, we already had this slide. The path of the 21st century superhuman, we're becoming conscious creators of our reality, what we see in the world around us that we don't like or that we do like is a mirroring of what is within us. The language of light, how to get what we desire from the field of possibilities or the divine matrix. Pray, meditate, jump, drum, chant, compassion without judgment. Marry, mind and heart. This is from Greg Braden's work. It already is. Imagine mud between the toes when you're wishing for rain. Say to this mountain, move, and it will move. The heart is where we develop Heart coherence 
is where we develop love, compassion, and gratitude. And when we develop this heart coherence, we begin seeing synchronicities, precognizance, accomplishing our dreams. Heart Math Institute out in California um, has some great tools for developing heart coherence. It's like 99 bucks to get a little biofeedback thing you can put on your phone these days. Um, it's really fun to play with and know when you're in heart coherence. I'm in heart coherence a lot of times when I'm writing on the computer I learn, you know? So we each have our times. We go into that state, but we're healthier. We're resonating love to the world. Um, we can be in partnership and help raise our, um, our love quotient that way. Love, compassion, and gratitude are the foundation. They're the emotions that we're in. And they've been shown to activate DNA codons. They've actually figured out, you know, 97% junk DNA, really? Well, it isn't junk DNA. It just got disconnected along the line somewhere long ago. And let's say it just got disconnected because we decided we were not creators. We decided to live outside of love. So we're all here in a generational paradigm that we're cleaning up. So HeartMath Institute has proven when we go into heart coherence, we go into love, compassion, and gratitude. Literally, our DNA begins reconnecting. Want to know how to get 100% activation in your DNA? Learn how to go into heart coherence. Breathe and smile. Meditate. So heart coherence links up the codons in our DNA. You get pictures of DNA. Look at it. See what it looks like. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. Reality is an illusion, albeit a very persistent one, Albert Einstein. So it's been shown meditating 15 minutes a day for two months. You um, increase the, re, um, the regeneration hormone by 30%. Actually, Deepak Chopra was the person who told me this. I was at a non-duality conference with him, and he said, don't tell anybody. But um, a lady that I know is just getting the Nobel Prize for discovering that 15 minutes of meditation um, it, within two months, you've raised that hormone that is the more useful hormone, um, 15 to 30%, anti-aging hormone. Lo increases love, compassion, gratitude, activates our DNA. This is a meditation um, picture from the book. Um, I'm probably not gonna have time today because I think we've got a pretty full day, but uh, usually at my workshops, and we will have online pretty soon, um, our 21st century superhuman meditation. Basically what we do is go into the field, allow ourselves to dismantle ourselves from particle form into wave form, and then become unmanifest, and just swim around and being unmanifest for a while, and then invite the field to give birth to our life in new ways with greater love and breathe and smile. Yeah, that's how you do it. So feed the, we can feed the earth grids of light. This is kind of what it looks like when we're here gathered as a group or when we're individual and we are choosing to center in heart coherence and we're literally changing the entire light field around the planet. Um, develop your inner knowing with regular practices. Honor your intuition. This is from Alan Alda. Intuition, you have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. What you'll discover will be wonderful. What you'll discover will be yourself. You know that still small voice? That little voice that wants to tell you, hey, do it this way. You go, no, 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 I've got a more logical way I should be doing it. When you learn to get rid of that logic and start listening, your life really changes. And it's a trait, it's a practice, it's an art to listen to that over the control of our culture, the culture's ways. Okay, activating our highest senses, high vibration love relationship. If you think you're separate, you're living in an optical delusion, Albert Einstein. It's like we are the drop and we are the ocean in the drop. It's like when you're a drop in the um, water, we are, like if you're a drop in the river, you are made of the same water as the river, but you're an individuation within that. So heaven in ancient Aramaic meant the community of love. So how cool is that? I have to say, a really beloved Catholic lady, when I said to her, told her this, she said, you mean heaven isn't this place out there? 
And um, it's really here and now. It's in our minds and hearts. This is how we're designed to live. The community of love here and now. There was a whole false story told in the slave species culture that death is real. That if you're bad, you're going to go to that place where you're going to suffer. And if you're good, you get to go to the good place. This was a whole story that was made up. It's part of the old program. So, everybody ready to go down the accelerated path here? We've got 10 minutes. I have a lot more I want to get to you guys. So, amplify your resonance with love, the electromagnetic field of the heart. Advancing our DNA. Life begins where fear ends. So, I... A lot of times people say to me, oh, I want to go with you. We're traveling. Um, we're doing Peru trips. We're, I had five people go with me last time. They decided like two weeks before I was going. It's an incredible, magical place. And I didn't even put out, these are the scrolls. Um, they're an amazing download that was done from 1960 to 1978. The guy was automatic writing from Galactic Mind. Uh, 10,000 words on a page in 10 minutes, in 12 minutes. Um, I have I carry some of these scrolls with me. I'm getting ready to do a bunch of produce a bunch of videos on them. You can read them online. They're in Spanish. They're called the Message of the Alpha and Omega, the Scrolls of the Lamb of God of the Fifth Book of Revelation. And I do believe that that's what they are. They talk about spaceships being vehicles of consciousness, um, real high frequency people that I met who are the caretakers and guardians of these scrolls. This is a book, Silver Vessels. One of the guys actually did these paintings during the 10 years he spent with the guy who was downloading the scrolls. Spaceships, Crystal Cities, I mean, they're amazing. I helped him publish this as 99 cents on Kindle. Um, we share them at workshops a lot. This is some of our crew in Grand Haven. Um, Teddy does table time with people. She's really a great healer. She's been seeing light around people since she was a little tiny kid. Um, but we have a really nice crew who travel with us. So, as cherished concepts such as free will, natural genius, and creatorship emerge as a new human, the homo novus, a human being without illusions of separation or limitation. And I think I have this slide in here again later. So, that is part two. That's, um, part two is mind in the book. The only evolution is recognition of our ultimate oneness. If you don't understand this, it's business as usual. And this is Francis Lucille. Um, on non-duality. We are being forced into a situation, this is Stephen um, Behrman and Bruce Lipton, where we are being forced into a situation where we either evolve or die, which would you prefer? Our personal preferences exert a lot more control over our reality than we have so far imagined. Consequently, what we choose to prefer might actually make a difference in the fate of humanity. What you do every day in your personal life matters. It matters to this time we're in. We're in a critical time of change on planet Earth. None of us are here as accidental tourists. Remember, breathe, smile, love, and look around for what you can do in your local community. A billion are hungry on the planet. A child dies every 15 seconds from waterborne illness. You are not the doer, you are the door, Richard Bartlett. Do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> HeartMath Institute, love, compassion, and gratitude. Wars do not make one great, and they are not a solution. So we're in emerging global communities. Um, New Earth Nation came out a couple years ago. 250,000 people joined in four months. Is this just us in this room? Nope. There's millions of people on the planet right now. So we're moving beyond money into a system that supports humankind, the Ubuntu movement. You can look it up on Facebook. It's all over the world. Um, Michael Tellinger, um, Virtual Earth Village is a site of mine under development, um, now creating tomorrow's possibilities, a place for us to gather and share what's going on. The United Kingdom of God, Sky Earth. There's a lot of videos out on this right now. I'm actually on a team for Swissindo. Um, this is the Global Collateral Fund Kennedy was attempting to restore to humanity. So if you want to know more about these things, follow us at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. You can find everything there. There's a section called Media. I do really regular shows you can watch. Um, I interviewed Mr. Cash last week, who is um, kind of on the front line of the plasma energy movement. I actually interviewed Greg and Michelle. It's from the show. Um, it's not a fashion show. It's a real show. Um, and so a lot of really cool people on these shows and a lot of other great people on the network. 
Remember, we are all affecting the world every moment, whether we mean to or not. Our actions and states of mind matter because we're so deeply interconnected with one another. Working on our own consciousness is the only important thing we do at any moment, and being loved is a su supreme creative act. That's from Ram Das. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Love, compassion, and gratitude put us into heart coherence. Our true power supply is connection with source or the field. We are now stepping into our possibilities as 21st century superhumans. Earth's ascension is about us shedding all that is not of love. And we're going into this new phase of becoming homos, homo novus or homo illuminus. So that's part three of the book, Live Your Dream, Success, Passion, Relationship, and Community. And so then we go into health. As Greg was saying, Emoto, we're 79% water. Our unconscious content crystallizes in the physical structure. We free it up with breath, cleansing, and high-frequency nutrition. Stimulants, sugar, refined foods are all things that help hold all that old data in. So we want to cleanse body, mind, and spirit. Doing lemon juice in the morning in warm water. Pinch of Celtic sea salt, really great way to start your day. Green shakes, smoothies, 50% raw. I have a book back there called Super Immunity Secrets. It's got 50 vegan, you know, the 50 vegan vegetarian recipes. Um, just really everyday fare. How do we do this in a simple way? Not gourmet, not complicated. Ketogenic desserts that keep us from our blood sugar going up. Teddy and I will be teaching um, food prep classes and other health classes online at our website. I'm going to Costa Rica on Monday. I've invited a group of people to go down and cleanse, detox with me, and um, th that's available. We'll be doing a trip to John of God, actually, this fall. We were just meeting with some of the really cool people from there. We get together with community. Who are your community? Can you sit down and have dinner with them? Share love with them? This is from John Robbins. Your life does matter. It always matters whether you reach out in friendship or lash out in anger. It always matters whether you live with compassion and awareness or whether you succumb to distractions and trivia. It always matters how you treat other people, how you treat animals, and how you treat yourself. It always matters what you do, it always matters what you say, and it always matters what you eat. So even if you eat meat, do it find compassionately raised meat. So that's rejuvenation and growing younger. That's the, what, the fourth part of the book. David R. Hawkins, Power Versus Force. The universe holds its breath as we choose, instant by instant, which pathway to follow. For the universe, the very essence of life itself is highly conscious. Every act, thought, and choice adds to a permanent mosaic. Our decisions ripple through the universe of consciousness to affect the lives of all. Lest this idea be considered either merely mystical or fanciful, let's remember the fundamental tenet of the new theoretical physics. Everything in the universe is connected with everything else. Our true design is love. Breathe. Smile. And love. Join us on the path, 21st Century Superhuman. You can come and talk to Teddy and I back at the table. Earth Mother Gaia is waiting for us to take off our shoes and dance with her, to remember our hearts and love for things that really matter, to narrow the gap before it's too late, to hold hands and sing together in the ever-present now. Embark on the most powerful evolutionary leap in human history.